Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to another episode of the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. Join me as we press in today and we talk about be healed, be made whole. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. Such powerful words. But when you are in the trenches, when you are in the midst of a battle that is raging all around, a battle against sickness and disease where the symptoms scream so loud, where everything looks like it's all over and you are defeated, you need to know how to receive that healing. It's a place of learning how to walk in such obedience. It's a place of learning how to hear His voice and to come into such an alignment with Him. How to truly walk by faith. Well, I pray that this message blesses you, encourages you, and strengthens you in the midst of the battle so that you would receive your healing and be made. Let's pray. Let's press it. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come by way of the finished work of the cross and the price you paid, Jesus. You came to destroy the works of the enemy, and that includes sickness and disease. So, Father, we stand that you are the Lord, our healer. Come and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, that we might fully receive all that you have for us and walk into that place, Father, where we're healed and made whole. I thank you for the word of life that blesses, encourages your people, and strengthens them, and that Jesus, you would receive all the glory in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. We see so many testimonies in the Gospels of people that were healed, and who got the glory? Jesus. Oh, sickness and disease does not bring glory to Him, but healing does. And he came to destroy the works of the enemy. And we've got to recognize we are in a battle. We've got to recognize our true enemy. And we've got to understand who the commander-in-chief is. Who is the master and whose voice we need to listen to and obey, especially in the trenches where there's so much at stake. If you've ever been in the trenches or you're in them, then you'll know what I'm talking about. We need to have the right people with us. People that strengthen and encourage. There are so many people that have a wealth of opinion, but in the day of battle, when you're in the trenches, they will not come and stand with you. It's too scary. It's too difficult. But those who have developed character and the secret place of His presence, those who have sought His face and don't come bringing what they have of themselves, but rather come bringing forth Him, come and realize that he is the answer. Come and, because they want Jesus glorified in the midst of it. I love to read where it says that they went out preaching the gospel, Jesus working with them, and he was confirming the word with signs and wonders following. We are not the healers. He is. Our job is to simply be faithful to preach this glorious gospel and work together with him while he does the signs and wonders. Turn with me real quickly to Luke chapter 8, and we're reading 43 through 48. And it says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians and could not by any, came, uh, could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, 
for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. And the actual Hebrew there is whole. Go in peace. She came for healing. She had gone to these physicians. She had spent all she had. And I want you to understand the consequence of this attack of the enemy was not just the sickness destroying her body, not just the fact that she was weak and all the issues and the symptoms that she had to endure, not just the impact socially where people cut her off, but there was also the financial impact that we see of these 12 years that all her livelihood is gone. It's impacted her emotionally. You think about the memories and the thoughts. It's impacted her every area of her life. So when she got healed, there was more that she needed. And the master doesn't desire just to give you the least. He always wants to make sure that you are made whole because it's the enemy and he comes to destroy all the works of the enemy. He wants your life to be a living testimony, full, complete, whole, nothing missing, nothing lacking. And then to declare over you, go in peace. Go in peace, nothing missing. Smith Wigglesworth said, as soon as he was willing to yield. He was in a condition where God could meet his need, where God could display his power, where God could have the woman. Now I want you to see here for a second. There is this place that God is looking to bring us to, this place that we have to suddenly stop trying to make it happen and simply yield. This place where the call is to walk in obedience not to our opinions, but to actually hearing His voice and obeying it and surrendering everything to Him. I think one of the greatest problems in this hour is we have so much knowledge. We are so taught on healing. We have all this knowledge of healing, but we don't have revelation of it. We walk in knowledge and we are puffed up by knowledge and our opinions that we don't ever hear His voice and walk in the revelation that He is the healer and His heart. We're not walking in this greater intimacy because true revelation always brings you closer to Him because you're getting a greater revelation of Him and who He is and His thoughts towards you. When you're in a battle, when you are in sickness, you're often in these trenches and the noise and the scenery is so oppressive, so loud, that it challenges you. And I pray that right now, if you're in the midst of this, this message blesses you. And if you're not, it would so strengthen you to get a hold of the fact that He is the healer, that you might be a blessing to another. Because as you pour out into others, you open the door for Him to pour into you. And God so desires that we would be blessed. Smith said, people are saying, I want the baptism. I want healing. I would like to know for certainty that I'm a child of God. I see nothing, absolutely nothing in the way except unyieldedness to the plan of God. This place where, God, we are so predetermined to do it our way. And when you are in a battle, you cannot afford, we don't see. I am in this trench and I don't see. And it is very difficult because there's so much going on. I remember when we lost our son. And I remember being in the hospital those many days and all the machines and the sounds, the sound of his heart, and listening to it stop, I think it was like five times. And then we went in for my daughter. My wife was pregnant. And here we go in, and it's that time of birth. And everybody's nervous. And there's all the sounds once again. And the enemy loves to take those sounds and to capture you, and to get you caught up in fear and in worry. But we are to look to Him and know that He has a perfect plan. And I saw how God works such a wondrous plan 
in the birth of my daughter, who was born on 030303 at 404. God's handprint was on it all over. And all of a sudden, those sounds that one time haunted, traumatized, he was able to so deliver us from it as we got the revelation that he was fully in control. You need to come and be hidden in the secret place. In that place, in the midst, where you are in the trenches that are vibrant with the sounds and the noises of the enemy, you're kept so that your eyes are on him. Smith said, when the prodigal son had returned and the father had killed the fattened calf and made a feast for him, the elder brother was angry and said, Thou never gave us me a kid that I might make merry with my friends, which is in Luke 15. But the father said to him, All that I have is thine. He could have killed a fatted calf at any time. Beloved, all in the father's house is ours but it will come only through obedience. And when he can trust us, will he not uh, come behind, we will not come behind in anything. And the Lord is just longing for us to come to the place where we might fully know who we are in him. And we might not fully know his heart towards us and not walk in opinion. I can only imagine the son's heart towards the father. He didn't get the revelation of the greatness and the goodness of the father, and he still didn't get it. When the prodigal's brother came back, he was still so hard and so focused on him that he missed everything. And we can get so caught up in us that we miss everything. And we miss in the midst where God wants to so give us a greater revelation of his heart that we would so love the brethren the same way. In the midst of the greatest trials and storms, we're so broken with love because of his love. And we know that we are kept and secure in the midst of all of it. Because God always wants to give the pressed on, shaken together, the overflowing measure. And in the time where it looks like everything has been stolen from you, and you're about to lose everything, that's the time you need to know the very goodness of the Lord your God, the very wonderful heart of Him, and how He longs to so bless you above and beyond He's not the God seeking to steal, to kill, and destroy, but the one who comes to give life. We say we know that, but you need to have such a revelation on the inside that a righteous anger rises up, that you recognize the true enemy, and you make a stand against it. And the proof is in our words and in our deeds. The proof of the prodigal son's brother's heart was in his words. And I pray that we will be so changed as we abide in the secret place and in His Word and allow our ears to be opened that we might hear it and be touched by it once again. God, Smith said, God wants to change our faith today. He wants us to see it is not obtained by struggling and working and pining. The Father Himself loveth you. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, we, there's certain things we say we know, but the proof is so often seen in the days of trial, where we so labor, we're always trying, what have I missed? How can I make God do this? And we don't stand there in that place of such weakness. Holy Spirit, in this place of weakness, come and allow me to bring forth that worship that touches the Father's heart. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and bring me to the place where I'm so solid, secure in the Word. I'm moved that I can stand there where all my natural hope is faded and have a hope. Sorry, all my natural hope is so faded, but I have a hope that comes from heaven because I know Him and I know He's never failed me. Do we forget all the great and wondrous things that He's done for us? Or do we keep them ever before our eyes and say, God, I remember I remember how you didn't feel then. And we begin to get to this place of worship so that our heart is soft. Are we so filled with the care? And it sounds easy, but when you're in the trenches and the noise is loud and everything is screaming at you, you have to have that ability for the Holy Spirit to take you to the side. His name, Comforter, means one who takes you to the side. And there He truly comforts you. Unless 
he's able to bring us to the side and speak to us and speak words that go deeper that we really hear and as a consequence they cause a response smith said you're not going to get it without having his presence his presence changes you you're not going to get it be able to get the results without the marks of the lord jesus the man must have the divine power within himself devils will take no notice of any power if they do not see the christ jesus i know and paul i know but who are ye the difference between these men was that they had not the marks of christ so the manifestation the power was not seen and we need to be those that are so identified with jesus that our whole life is lost in him it's time for us to be wholly sold out to be secret place dwellers where everything i say and do and think is him and anything that would offend him oh i pray that we become so in tune with so sensitized that he looks through every aspect of our lives and shines a light and says this offends me remove this we can be so ignorant especially in this hour where we're so rich in opinions but i believe that god wants to clean house to remove all those openings and doors that we've opened to allow the enemy in because he hates the enemy and he wants to bring a far surpassing victory to you he's not just thinking about your healing but he's thinking of something greater to do something where he is glorified and the kingdom is divinely advanced there's always more at stake and i realize sometimes it's hard to imagine when you were in the midst of a major battle and everything is on the line i understand i've been there but that's the time where we must have our eyes on him and that's why i pray that we constantly and every season seek his face that we go after him with everything we've got now because there are seasons and times where it's not as easy and it needs to become automatic as soldiers train for the battle and god wants to so train you right now so that he the commander who knows he is the one that develops the plan not we he is the one that tells you do this do that and we are simply called to obey but we've got to first hear the commands many of us we're so fixed in ourselves that we step out doing what we think he's saying and not walking what he is saying psalm 119 verse 89 forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven it is firmly established and god watches over it to perform it it will not fail and every circumstance is where it is settled if you come before the supreme high court of heaven you will find that he will not change or violate his word but the word must be settled in us i can say this i can say i know all the promises on healing because i've heard them i've heard them a thousand times but we've become complacent and the words have become commonplace they're not living and vibrant living right now in me speaking with an authority that causes a reaction and the proof is the tolerance we give to the enemy on the small things we get a headache and immediately we pamper to it we immediately go and take our medication and i'm not being judgmental or critical we have to learn how to change and first seek the lord and say lord i come to you you are my healer show me what i need to do teach me so whether i take the medication i do everything in obedience and out of faith recognizing first and foremost he is the healer it starts it starts in the small things so that we are trained and disciplined and in all things we understand obedience so that we become sons and daughters and the enemy recognizes who we are we claim that with this great anointing we claim so many things like the sons of Sceva but the day of battle it's not real the word said this one comes out through prayer and fasting there's not an earning but it rather is a yielding it's a pursuit of 
and a surrendering to, until we are now identified as those found in the secret place. And you cannot separate us from the Word. You cannot separate us from Jesus. It's our life. Swin so said, What will make man believe the divine promises of God? Believed. Let me say to you today, God wants you to make you ministering spirits. And it means to be clothed with another power. And this divine power, you know when it is there, and you will know when it goes forth. The baptism of Jesus must bring us to have a single eye to the glory of God. Everything else is wasted time and wasted energy. Beloved, we can reach it. It is a high mark, but we can get to it. You ask how, what will thou have me to do? That is the plan. It's a perfect surrender to the call of God and perfect obedience. I'm in a battle, but you are the commander. And I come and I submit to your authority. I submit to your voice. I will not do one thing until I've heard you. And so, God, I seek your face day after day. I long for you. I hunger for you. I get into my instruction manual, manual and I learn until these things become second nature, not commonplace, but rather so part of me. They're everything to me. Are the precious promises of God everything to you? Are they so integrated with your nature and personality that they're changing you? That how you act on the most simplest things is now dictated by those precious promises. Are they simply things in a promise box that you go searching for and pull out? Words that you've heard and you know, but they're simply head knowledge. Maybe you mentally assent to, but what they're not is where the Spirit of God has written it with His very finger into your heart. And I just pray that in the name of Jesus, that we would come into such a place of surrender in the secret place to allow the Spirit of God to write it into our heart so that it becomes so a part of us that we get and understand the heart of the Master behind it, that we understand His very desire and we see the goodness and the wonder of our God and that why He wants to bless us with the pressed on shaking together overflowing measure and how there's always so much more at stake and there's lives. We're living for His glory. We're living to see people touched and lives changed. Smith said, First, God called me, and His, precious, His presence sorry, was so precious that I said to God at every call, I would obey Him. And I yielded, and I yielded, and I yielded, until I realized that I was simply clothed with another power altogether. And I realized that God took me, tongue, thoughts, and everything. And I was not myself, but it was Christ working through me. This place where we're not just walking in an agreement, we've talked about this. Because an agreement falls and fails in the day of offense. Where all of a sudden God does not do the way we want to. Or we face a challenge that's too big for us. But a submission. A wholehearted submission because I know my Jesus. And I may not understand. And I may not appreciate or I, I get, I don't always get it. But I so trust the Master that in the middle of the trenches, when He calls me to do something, I know that He is faithful, watching over His Word to perform it, and I trust Him. So whatever He says, I will surely do. Nothing is taken lightly. Nothing is taken commonplace. I know His Word. I know what He's saying. So that when the voice of the enemy tries to come and deceive and lie, and I get propaganda from the enemy, there's a righteous anger that stirs up because I know the voice of the Good Shepherd. And I say no to that. It may come through various forms. It may come through the voice of a friend, the voice of a foe, the voice of the world. It doesn't matter. I recognize the voice of my Good Shepherd because I know Him in the secret place of His presence. I know His Word. And His Word is living in me. And it has to be so alive, so vibrant, that I take such time pursuing, seeking, day after day after day. Because in the day of battle, a soldier cannot be entangled in the things of the world. 
he must be there to serve the master. A hundred percent. I am there. I have an assignment. I have a purpose. I have a focus. Smith said, how many of you today have known that God has called you over and over and has out his hand upon you, but you have not yielded? How many of you have had that breathing of his power within you, calling you to prayer, and you have to confess you failed? Do we hear the call of the Spirit saying, come aside, come, you need to get aside with me? Do we hear the breath of the Spirit breathing on us? that we might be so touched. Pray. Oh, would you stand in the gap for this one? Would you cry out for that one? But sometimes we're so self-focused. We're so seeking about ourselves that we refuse to yield, to yield to that voice of the Spirit of the living God, especially when it's a call for somebody else. But as you pour out to others, you open your heart for him to pour into you. You allow him to do such a work in the heart because so often it's the issues of the heart that become the problems, the blocks that prevent us receiving what God has. And God is so trying to just get us in the right place and he gives us these simple assignments. They look so small and innocent, but before heaven they're obedience and they're powerful and they're worship. And they're opening the door to enable him to do what he so desires to do in you. It's not whether something's great or small. It's the obedience out of love towards him. It's being found faithful. Just give me a formula, God. It's not a formula. It's a relationship. We say that. But when we're in a battle, we're looking for a formula. And God desperately, desperately cries out, I want you to get it. It's a relationship with me. I am 110% committed to you. You cannot fully appreciate how committed. And I'm with you. But you need to absolutely trust me. You need to do the things I tell you to do, small or great. Simply yield. Simply do. Smith said, my message is on the line of faith. Because some do not hear in faith, it profits them nothing. There is a hearing of faith and a hearing which means nothing more than listening to words. See, faith comes by hearing. And we can be, have you ever been in a great meeting? They're talking about something important. You just had lunch and you're sleepy. The words you send me here, you agree with. But they're not penetrating. The speaker had such a plan and desire to impart something to you, to stir you up. But we miss it. We grasp the main topic. But the deep meaning we so miss. And God says, I have such a wealth of information I wish to pour into you, download to you. But we become so dull of hearing that half the time when he calls us, we don't come aside. And the other time when he speaks to us, oh, I got that. Some people, you know, that irritate me are those you talk to and they're so busy doing other things. My mom would say, I can multitask. But you're not listening to me. Oh, I am. You don't have the appearance of looking and listening to me. And we need to recognize so many of us God, we can multitask. I get it. And the Lord's saying, listen, this is life and death. This is critical information you need to hear with hearing so that it produces faith in you. You've got to listen. You can't play a game with this. You need to allow my spirit to breathe on this, to impart so that it changes you. It is going to have to correct you. It may have to rebuke you. It may have to address issues in you. It may tell you do this and you don't understand it, but you're going to have to do it by faith because when there's a real hearing, then there's a consequence of doing. You'll always find that faith produces a point of contact. 
Faith produces an action that puts you in the right place to receive what God has for you. Faith produces words. Faith produces confession. I'm not talking about a formula. I'm talking about the living substance of faith that when it's living in you, the proof of the pudding is the words that come out of you and the consequential actions that you take. Faith caused Abraham to walk. Faith caused, we see the stories of the great heroes of faith to do something. Faith had a response and people were not doing the response to get the healing. They were doing the response because faith in them called them to do it. We think, oh, if I just do this, that's the formula. If I just touch the hem of his garment, it wasn't the doing, the touching, like that was the magic formula. It was the faith. How often did Jesus say, be it to you according to your faith? Something stirs in you. Where God imparts, do this. And that becomes your touching of the hem of his garment. Do this. I've heard sometimes the Lord say, go here and do this. It doesn't make sense to me, Lord. But the call that came and the knowing and every step inside of me, something grew. You will find that often he says, go and present yourself. And somewhere along the line, they got healed. As they stepped out, faith continued to grow. They got their eyes off of the problem and on to the solution. And God often wants to get your eyes off of things, off of the noise, off of the problem, off of the symptoms, and on to Him. And He says, go do this. And it's a consequence of something stirring in you. Something, you start to see how there's a point of contact. I don't know, but I just feel that do this. Spence said this, when the people were bitten by the fiery serpents in the wilderness, God's word said to Moses, he that looketh shall be healed. The look made it possible for God to do it. Did the touch heal the woman? That's the woman with the issue of blood. No. The touch meant something more. It was a living faith. Jesus said, thy faith hath made thee whole. And I pray that you get this, so that in the secret place of his presence, as you abide in him, in his word, there comes something in you. Something stirs a living hope, a living faith, and you just feel the unction to do this. And the consequence is that becomes the contact point, the expression of your faith and of your obedience that puts you in the place where God all of a sudden can do what He's desiring to do, make you whole. And we could shake off all of that opinion and knowledge that was wrong and get back to revelation. Get back to the place of the hearing, present tense, ongoing, so that there's something in us. There's a walking with Him. And I look at the ways that Jesus did some things. They had to pay the taxes, go fish. He didn't just turn and say, go check my pocket. Go into the drawer, something. No, go fish. He always had something unique, something wonderful. And there was a call and faith and obedience. Something stirred in them. I can imagine Peter, something stirred him. I just can't wait to see the first fish that I catch. I don't know how he's going to do, but I know catch a fish. Maybe it's the fish. I don't know, but I know this. He said it. I know he's faithful. I've seen all that he's done before, and he will do it again. God is faithful. So may in the name of Jesus, we would remember once again all the things that he did and how he's always done it in so many wonderful and different ways. And when we come to the well, Come into the secret place of His presence, into that living, vibrant relationship to the hearing of the Word, that it would produce in you something.
a living hope, a living faith that causes a response that as we step out in obedience to that which is in us, to the hearing of the master, the commander in chief saying, doing this, the one who's with you in the trenches, the one who's committed to your victory, to giving you a far surpassing victory, the one who deserves all the glory, the one who is so committed to destroying the enemy, the one who will not let you fail. If you'll stay faithful to him, trust him. But I don't understand this. I don't get simply by faith, trust him. And you watch what he can do. Get your eyes off of the thing and get your eyes onto him. Would you begin to worship him? Would you just begin in the name of Jesus to lift him up? Would you begin to glory in him? Would you begin to praise him? Would you begin to exalt, declare that he is Lord? Oh, that voice of the symptom, the circumstances, we hear it 24-7. We need to hear him. We need to get our eyes back onto Jesus. We need to get our eyes back onto the word. We need to get our spirits stirred up again. We need to get our joy back so there's a strength. We need to allow his peace to so infiltrate every part of our being. We begin to worship him. The God who makes whole, the God who is the Lord, our healer. Not just the healer. He is my healer. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. We come to that well, to that place where you satisfied. Father, there's not one person that comes to you that leaves unsatisfied. You are faithful and we worship you. And I pray for any person right now afflicted in any way. I declare that in the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, Father, they are healed and made whole. Let that healing flow. Let every symptom cease right now. And I thank you, Father God, that in that name above all names, that whatever sickness or disease is attacking them must leave and that healing must begin to manifest. Show them Holy Spirit. Teach them, guide them, pour on them your presence. Even around that presence, God, and we're so grateful. We need the presence. Oh, I thank you. The Lord was present to heal and you're present right now. And so we thank you. You are enthroned and the praises of your people. You come and abide your presence. So we worship you. We worship you. We thank you as the Lord our God, the Lord our healer. We bless you, Jesus. We begin to bless you. And some people just need to start stepping out in faith and doing what the Spirit of God is stirring them to do on the inside. Some of you may need to run. Some of you may need to shout. Some of you may need to just try to smell again and allow the Lord our God to just so bless your body right now. In the name of Jesus, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, Jesus is the healer. We just preach the word, and he confirms it with signs and wonders following. He is the living word. So we just want to give place to him. We just come to open the door and talk about him, allow him to turn up. We enthrone him. We glory in him. We give him the praise. We give him the worship. It's all about Jesus. And we just want eyes to see, ears to hear so that we hear and see his word. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for the wonderful presence of the living God, present right now to heal and to deliver and to set free. Because Jesus, you are Lord. We honor you. We bless you. And I thank you for what you were doing and what you're about to do. Father, in the name of Jesus. And I want to encourage you that you get into the word like never before. Soak in this thing. Get the praises. Get his presence. You need the presence, so let the presence fill the place. Keep. You are in a war footing, so you keep the presence of God. You do everything you can. You begin to praise him. You begin to glory in him. You begin to boast in the Lord your God. You need to strengthen yourself in the inner man. Oh, may the fresh oil of the Spirit just pour on you. A time of refreshing fall on you. And right now, in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. He is your healer. Look to him. Look to his word. Get your eyes off. And as he begins to speak to you to do this, do whatever he's stirring your spirit to do. In that simple act of faith and obedience, you begin to open the door and you will be so amazed because he wants to make you whole. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, whole, complete. In that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I pray that you are blessed. I pray this message is just so resonating on the inside, echoing, vibrating, filling, saturating your being. The word stirring on the inside of you. Something beginning to glow in you because of Jesus. Oh, there's an excitement. You're being refreshed even right now. You're getting a taste. God, you are my healer. You recall all of the great and wonderful things he's done. Oh, there's testimonies begin to stir in you. 
of the mighty things that he has done before and what he has done before he will surely do. He is no respecter of persons. He is a respecter of faith. And it only takes the faith the size of a mustard seed. Stop looking at the size of your faith and start looking to him. Begin to worship him. Begin to glory in him. Amen. And I just pray that this message has truly blessed you and encouraged you. Would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments because as you do, you really help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. And it's a time for us to push forward. And we thank you that you're standing with us. And if God puts in your heart to be a prayer partner, I thank you. For more information, simply go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. And you can sign up for free if you want to do it officially. You will receive our email newsletter uh, for our Zoom services up to 10. We just want to know that you're standing with us and we'll try to send out information um, to really help you. If you are sick, we are about to set up where you can ask for a prayer handkerchief. We are going to anoint and pray over them, um, but we will need your full and complete address. Please put your email address so we can also make sure that we've got all the information correct. We're working on this. We're going to hopefully have them up in the next couple of weeks. Our heart is to really make a bold push forward this year. And so we want those prayer uh, partners behind us. And if God puts in your heart to be a financial partner, thank you. Because we want to go forward this year and see so much. We want to see so many backsliders, more than anything, brought back. We want to see lives, people restored, made whole, and living boldly for Jesus. Amen. We have to understand the devil, the, the, the sickness, the disease, how many lives and families it's destroyed. So let's stand together. Let's make a stand on his word. And let's preach this glorious gospel, the full gospel, the full life. Amen. So I thank you for standing, whether officially or unofficially, praying with us. And so that together we can do great things for Jesus. I thank you for watching. Check out more in the healing series to constantly build you up and strengthen you in these days. And may you lay hold of the victory in Jesus. Thank you. And as always, I remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for him in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you.